I think that's what I've learned a lot as a sick. That's all I need as far as in conflict, that reassurance that everything will be okay. Welcome to the For the Love podcast with me, Jen Hatmaker, calling all Enneagram sixes. Today, we're exploring your number with graphic designer and artist, Ashton Bry. Hey, everybody, Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast. Welcome to the show. As you know, right now, we are in a series called For the Love of the Enneagram, and it's just gone bananas. We love it, and you love it, and it's just so fun. I am endlessly fascinated with the Enneagram and understanding people better and knowing how to be in relationship with them better and be their friend and their wife and their mom. And then, of course, understanding my own self. I literally cannot get enough. And so today's episode is so rich and good because we are finally to one of the most wonderful numbers today, the Enneagram 6. I love Enneagram 6s. My assistant Amanda is a 6 and I would be 100% lost without her. I could spend honestly the whole podcast talking about how wonderful she is, but the fact is she shows the best that sixes have to offer. She anticipates everything that needs to happen. And she works so hard to get it done in advance. She always has my back, always. A couple of my actual very best friends are sixes too, and they're so wonderful in the world. And so today I'm super pleased to welcome another incredible six to the show. And her name is Ashton Bry. Now, let me tell you about Ashton. She's a graphic designer who has created a ton of Enneagram artwork that you've probably seen on Instagram because her account has blown up. It's become so popular. It's whimsical, and it includes every single type in the Enneagram. I mean, she has dialed in tight to the Enneagram and has been able now to express it in art form. I can't wait for you to actually go look at her stuff. You're going to lose it. You are going to go down the rabbit trail, okay? So Ashton kind of splits her time, generally speaking, between South Carolina and Florida because while she's a full-time graphic designer and owns her own business, Ashton is also a cast member a few days a month at Disney because of course she is. We'll ask her about this. This is of course pre-COVID of course. We'll talk about that. I love it so much. Ashton is so creative and interesting and I think she does a beautiful job today of describing sixes. So for all of my sixes out there, I know that you are going to feel really understood today. I think she just nails it, like right on the nose about what makes you tick, what you love, what motivates you, what worries you, what you look like in relationships. It's all here, you guys. So whether you are a six or you love one, you are positively going to love my conversation today with the absolutely delightful Enneagram 6, Ashton Bright. I am absolutely delighted, Ashton, to welcome you to the For the Love podcast. I'm so happy to meet you. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so excited. I am just having a whole fit over here. Guys, what you should know is that before we started recording, Ashton just told me she's like, my mom, and I get this a lot from like some of my younger followers, my mom's been following you forever. She was like, I remember my mom talking about you when I was like 13. (laughs) I'm like so tickled. So now you're a grown adult that gets to be like in the community, not just like via your mom. So welcome aboard. Thank you so much. All right. I've told our listeners a little bit about who you are, what your deal is, but I would like to hear more about you in your own words because you have this really interesting and creative spirit and and also the way that you experience the Enneagram, which we're going to get into. But can you talk first about you? Tell us about you a little bit, who you are, where you are, and tell us specifically about your design business and what inspires you. And then of course, we're going to need to hear some more intel on your double life as a cast member at Disney. That's We're not going to get away without talking about that one for sure. Oh, of course not. So I'm Ashton. I am a six on the Enneagram. I feel like I have to preface everything with that these days. But I am all about neutral colors and my dog Oliver. And I have a fiance who's wonderful. We love to travel and go places. A lot of those places are Disney related, but you know, we have fun. I have had a t-shirt company for a while now, and it evolved into this Instagram account where I do all of my design work. So I do everything from t-shirts to decals and logos and 
custom designs and portraits and it's just kind of morphed into all of these different creative outlets and aspects, which I'm very thankful for because I know it is definitely a privilege to have that and to be able to do that as my job, which I never imagined like when I was graduating high school that this is what I would get to do full time. So I'm super thankful for that because I love what I do and I love getting to be creative and create things and do new content and things that make me happy. That's what you'll find me doing on a day-to-day basis. And then I try to go down to Disney. It's been kind of weird this year, obviously. Right, obviously. But I try to go down like once a month and work. I started with Disney in 2017 on a college program, which was such an awesome experience. Like I never expected it. So I've actually been with the company now for two consecutive years, but I was there previously. It's like all of my favorite things in one job. So I get to work with characters. So fun. When I got the job, I was like, oh, this will be neat. And I had no idea what went into it at all. That's fantastic. So that was cool. And good for you that your fiance is down for like the Disney stuff. Well, we met in Florida, so Uh, he didn't have a choice. Okay. It's just what it is. It's just going to be like the third member of your marriage, Disney. Basically. So, Okay. You mentioned your art, of course. You have created all this incredible art that marries kind of pop culture and the Enneagram, which is so clever, so creative, really, really innovative. Can you talk about how you personally found the Enneagram and what that experience was like for you? How quickly did you understand that you were a six? And what were those sort of early discovery moments like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I found the Enneagram because I never want to miss out on anything. I felt really left out when all of my friends were like, I'm an Enneagram this, I'm an Enneagram that. And I was like, what is an Enneagram? Like, I don't know anything about it. And so I started like doing my own research into it. And, you know, once I get into a topic, I am in a topic, like I'm going to read everything, I'm going to get all the books, I'm going to know every single thing that I can possibly figure out about this. And so when I first looked at the Enneagram from a whole, I always heard like fours are creative. So I was like, Oh, I'm a four, obviously, I'm so creative, look at me go. And then when I actually looked into it, I was like, I am not a four, like my motivations do not line up with a four at all. And so I finally landed on six. And it really clicked for me because I was you know, I've always been that overly prepared, like always thinking 10 steps ahead, always wanting. And it was like, I remember realizing that not all of my friends thought that way. And like my family members and stuff were not always like on like that, you know, like always on guard, like ready to go. So it really helped me connect with more of like my motivations behind why I am the way I am or why I do the things I do, which it's really cool to find out for me more about yourself. And so that's been really fun to just like, get to dig in more to that type of thing. Absolutely. So I like how you say I I go all in on a thing that I'm interested in. So when did you start creating art around the Enneagram? And I'm sure when you started your Instagram account, you didn't expect for it to explode the way that it has. So can you talk about your art and how that idea came to be and how you started fleshing that out and what it's been like for you to have it so wildly received? Oh, yeah. It's it's crazy to me. I still can't like wrap my head around it some days. So I started that Instagram account with no intentions of anything except somewhere to post the artwork that I was doing without annoying everyone on my like personal page, I guess. And tell everybody what it's called real quick so they can look it up while they're Ashton. listening. Create. So it's at Ashton period creates. So I just started it and I started this back in, I think like May of last year, just as a way to like make things that I could post. I got an iPad for Christmas, like the previous Christmas. And so I was drawing things and like living my best little life. And I wanted somewhere to post it. I didn't think anyone really cared about it. Like my first few followers were like a couple of my close friends and my mom. Sure, um, of course. <laughs> right. I got into the Enneagram shortly after that and started like looking into it. And I was really interested and I wanted to just, I was just inspired to start making things about each type because I wished like back when I was learning about it, there were different things, of course, but I wanted to see more stuff about individual types and just learn more than what I was able to find right off. And I am in no way like 
original in this idea by any means, but I just wanted to see more of the like related to me personally for my type. Yeah. So I like started creating like series of Instagram posts and one account that I followed and she saw my stuff and she's like, Oh my gosh, can I share it? Like, I love it. And I was like, sure. Like if you want to, like, you know, I'm still not thinking much of it outside of like maybe a few friends that are into it would be interested. Sure. She shared it and I gained a thousand followers in like three hours. Right. <laughs> and this was in August. And then it just like, it went from there. Like I talk all the time. I'm like, Oh, I hit 15,000 followers. I was so excited in December and I just hit 150,000. And so it just, and numbers aren't everything. Like I'm thankful for them, but it's, it's not the make or break necessarily. And what I'm doing, I do it because I love it, but I'm like overwhelmed. And I'm so thankful because I just, I've been given such a platform to tell people what I love and like show them my art and stuff. And so it's, it's overwhelming, but it's a good kind of overwhelming. Absolutely. I, I understand that entirely. You know, all you have to do is keep doing what brought you here. You don't have to be a bigger or a louder version of the you that people have started to follow. That's that's the good news, is that you get to just stay in the exact capacity that got you all the way to this moment, which is great to know that just because there's more eyeballs on it does not mean that all of a sudden you have to inflate it in such a way that it starts to feel like pressure. This is an Enneagram three trying to coach you right now. <laughs> like, yeah. let's just Please let, the, coach me. let the pressure valve release. And just continue to be who you are and do what you love in the way that you do it authentically. And do not let the watching eyeballs start to feel crushing. So obviously I'm a three. Yeah. Let's talk about being a six. Okay. This is this is the sixth episode in the Enneagram series, which by the way, you've pegged Chandler Bing from Friends as a six. That's feels really important to mention. I like him and I like that, I like that typing. I know we're not supposed to do that, but I don't care. I like it. All right. So this is what I'd like you to do real quick for everybody listening, because you've done a lot of work around this at this point, obviously, kind of in every way. Can you talk from a really high level? Tell us about sixes. Tell us what makes a six tick. Tell us what's the motivation behind underneath a six's work. What is what is her fear? What is her hope? Like, just say to somebody that's new to it, this is more or less what a six looks like in the world. Okay. Sixes are prepared. Their motivation is to be safe and secure. They want to do everything they can to just find that security. You want to be safe. You want to be secure. And I think the way that we do that is through our preparedness and through like, it gets pegged as anxiety around those things. But I tend to think it really is just being ready for whatever may come. And so you know, sixes are loyal. That's a huge part of what a six is. They are loyal to their people. They're responsible. They are caring for others. Like they care about their people. I've seen a lot of times like they're the best friends just because that loyalty ties into that. They have structure and they're devoted to their people. You know, like I said, when I jump into something, I jump into it. I'm devoted to that topic. I tend to be very much more practical. I'm very committed to a cause, to people. I think sixes are a lot around like that community aspect. Like community is very important to me. I tend to see that being important to a lot of sixes in general having, because community builds security. So when you have that community and you have those people, you have that security around you, which is what we're looking for at the end of the day anyways. Mm, That's a good connective tissue there. You know, getting in shape doesn't have to be about reaching some magic number on the scale, of course. It is about health, building healthier habits and feeling good inside your body. One of the best tools for building healthier habits that I found is called Noom. It's a habit-changing solution. That's what it is. And it helps its users learn to develop A new relationship with food through very personalized courses, like just where you are, just what you need. It's based in psychology. So Noom teaches you why you do the things you do and empowers you with the tools you need to break habits that are making you feel bad and replace them with better ones, right? That's it. Because no food is good or bad or off limits. So if you go off track, there's like no shaming or into that garbage. It's just tips like to help you get back to where you're wanting to go. So you don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. So sign up for your trial today at Noom. It's N-O-O-M dot com slash for the love. Do this for yourself. 
Visit Noom.com slash for the love to start your trial today. Okay, Noom.com slash for the love. So I think you maybe just touched on it, but on your Instagram, I noticed that you're not a huge fan of the reputation that sixes have sometimes among the other Enneagram numbers. Talk about that a little bit. What do you think everyone is missing about sixes? Where do you think sometimes that caricature, which listen, I am so with you. There's a caricature of every number and I hate the caricature of a three. I just hate it. I just want to burn it to the ground. And so I kind of understand what it feels like to seem sort of reduced and then thus misunderstood. So what does that look like for you as a six? So I really don't love that a lot of times I feel like sixes are painted as being like scared and anxious and, you know, bowing down, not wanting to stand up and just being like so fear ridden that they can't do anything else except for be consumed by that fear. When in reality, I tend to think that sixes can be the bravest of the types because they overcome that fear and they overcome that anxiety and that need for preparedness and security and whatever to face what whatever comes their way, whatever they're brought. I think that sometimes like at a overview, like we see them and we're like, oh, they're just really scared and anxious instead of seeing like how that can be such a great thing. So that's my biggest thing that I don't like to hear is Because people will be like, I don't want to be a six because I don't want to be considered like scared all the time. And I'm like, well, that's not what a six is. We do have fears. We do have things. And I'm a counterphobic six. So talk about that a little bit. What does that mean? So counterphobic six is just, you know, with sixes, there's like a fight or a flight. A lot of them are flight. I tend to think counterphobic is fight. Got it. So like I will be the one to, I have no problem standing up. I have no problem speaking out. But I think that, you know, I'm not scared of confrontation. A lot of things that play into 6-2 is the authority. So you can either like go against them, not really trust it, or you really look to them for the guidance and security. Counterphobic sixes go against authority. Like you want to find your way because you want to make sure you're doing the best thing, the right thing. Okay. Like what you're saying about sixes is exactly how I experience the sixes in my life. I have some really close people to me who are sixes. My assistant, Amanda, is one of them. And I mean, when you say preparedness, like she is 10 steps ahead of everything at all time. And I really mean that. That's I'm not exaggerating. Like she has this ability to helicopter way high above our work and look down on it and know what needs to be done now for later. She sent me an email this weekend And she said, she sends me like at the beginning of the week, here's everything on your calendar this week. Like just making sure you have it, making sure you've got your day's rhythm. You know, so she sent me the next four weeks, all my stuff for the next four weeks. And she's like, I'd like you to see where I've noted. I've built in some downtime for you. I've built, (laughs) I'm just dying laughing. Like, okay, that is amazing. She just literally carved it out. We're not, I'm not going to schedule anything from here to here. This is downtime. Use it well. I'm just dying. It makes me laugh so hard. Can I have an Amanda? Right? Holy cow. I I need an Amanda. Everybody does. Everybody does because I am a three. So I will work myself into the ground. I will literally until my fingers are stumps and then I fall apart because that's what happens. And so Amanda is the six who goes, I wonder if we could consider structuring your life in such a way. So that doesn't happen. It is possible. I'm like, oh, well, look at that. Look at that approach to life. So I wonder, because that is a superpower that you have, you sixes to to look down the road, to be ready, to be prepared, to head things off at the pass, to be proactive so you're not always just reactive like a bunch of the rest of us. And so I wonder if that superpower ever gets exhausting or if it ever leads to a bit of anxiety or control. I'm curious what the shadow side of that amazing ability looks like for you. Yeah, so I definitely, you know, sixes do go to three in stress. And I definitely see that like preparedness and wanting to be like on top of it all of the time, while it is a wonderful trait to have, and it is very helpful and it has done great things for me. It also can wear me down a lot quicker, I feel like, than other types who might not 
go that far. My brother is a seven and he doesn't think about, I love sevens. I want to be a seven sometimes. Is that your wing? What's your wing? I'm a wing five. I am a true wing five. Now you can lean on both. And I do see myself leaning sometimes, you know, you need two wings to fly, but I am very hardcore five right now. And so he doesn't think ahead like that, like the way that I do. And that could be personality, Enneagram, they could come together, you know, but I like sometimes I envy that. I'm like, holy cow, I just want to be able to sit back and not think about the next three and a half weeks and just, you know, just relax. I want to watch a Netflix show and not think in the back of my head, like, oh my Lord, I have 72 things that I need to be getting done right now in order to be prepared for the next month and a half. So it can be. And I think like being aware of that is important so that you can kind of reel yourself back in and ground yourself in the fact of like, yes, I need to be prepared, but certain things can wait. That's good. There's always a way to sort of work on self-mastery for every number, to notice the places where if I was going to slip, it'd be right here. When I start disintegrating, this is what it looks like. And so I want to talk to you about what that means primarily for sixes, which you just mentioned. For sixes, when you are growing, when you are in health, You look something like a healthy nine, which I'd like to hear you talk about. And then sometimes in stress, you just mentioned, you become a little bit more like an unhealthy three, which obviously I deeply, deeply understand. Can you talk about those two directions of both growth and stress in the life of a six, particularly in your own life? What does it look like for you when you are accessing that kind of healthy nine? And what does it look like for you when your stress is pushing you toward the shadow side of a three? Yes, absolutely. The best way I can explain it to you, and it it relates directly to my life, is when I'm working at Disney, I punch a clock. I clock in. I am on that entire time that I am there. But then when I clock out, I can kind of cut it off and I can go enjoy my life and I can go relax and just be, which I feel like is very nine. Like nines are so good at just being in the moment, I feel like, and just, you know, embracing where they are and who they are and what they're doing. And I can really do that when I am like at Disney or when I have a job that can be like on and then off. Now, as a business owner and as someone who's always wanting to do the next best thing and always stay a step ahead, I see myself more often than not slipping into that three of, I will work myself into the ground. I will stay up all night long doing things and It's not that I have anyone telling me outside of myself that I have to do this, but I want to be the best and I want to achieve all of these dreams and goals and things that I have. And I feel like the only way to do that is to just work, 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 work. You have to be able to find like, you know, five o'clock at night, I need to cut my phone off. I need to cut my computer off and just be, but I see myself when I am like super unhealthy in that three And by the way, I think threes are fantastic and the drive, just how great they are at encouraging other people to reach their best potential. I think it's awesome. But when I'm seeing the shadow side, as you called it, of that three, I'm not hurting anyone necessarily but myself, but I am definitely like digging a hole that will just continue to be harder to get out of if I don't stop myself before I am just completely buried at that point. You know, and it's just like with every number, there's just a beautiful side of every single number. And and a healthy three is just usually a wonderful force in the world. But you're right. There is that underbelly to it, which can be mastered. I mean, to your point, every single one of us with our, the places that we are going to be prone to disintegration, that's not a life sentence. It is not as if we are beholden to those tendencies or that we cannot learn to overcome them. As you mentioned earlier, you know, as a six is usually typecast is really afraid. Even if that's true somewhere internally, even that, as you said, could be really faced and really dealt with and, and worked through and potentially even overcome. And so that's the good news. That's to me, one of the great gifts of the Enneagram is it's not it doesn't put us on paper and say, well, here you go. There you are. That's just it. I mean, you know, make your peace. It provides so many paths for us to, to grow and to heal and to recover. It also provides a path in relationship, which I want to talk to you about, because as you mentioned, you're getting married this year. Huzzah. Yes. (laughs) When is your wedding? 
It's November 21st, so it's about six months away, and I am melting down internally. (laughs) Of course you are. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the bride's work, is to melt down. So let's talk about this. What number is your fiancé? And I'd like for you to talk about what your numbers, how they relate to one another. What is like, this is the way that my number and his number are fantastic together, and these are going to be our tension points that we're going to have to work through because we see the world differently. So my fiance is a one and I had initially thought that I might be a one at some point, like when I was first starting out. But the reason is, and the reason we work so well is we both love to have a plan. Totally. We both love to be prepared. Yeah, that's compatible. You know, we always want to be prepared. We always want to have a plan going into it, which that plays into my need for preparedness, but it plays into his need for that's like the right thing. That's the that's the way he wants to be, you know, like it just, it it feels right to have a plan and be prepared for him. It feels necessary for me to be like that. And so it, it works really nicely together. The only thing is like, sometimes when I am maybe more healthy, I don't really need a plan so much. And I really do just do want to kind of lay back and go with whatever happens and, you know, ride it out and, you know, see where we go from here. And he always really needs that plan. He always needs to be prepared. And so learning how to roll with that together has been interesting and it's very minor. The biggest thing as far as like conflict is for us is, and this makes me sound awful. I want to brawl. Like if you're going to fight me, like I want to fight. Like let's go, let's go toe to toe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, and I'm not talking like, you know, like a screaming match, Uh but you want high engagement. Yeah. Like I need an engaging conversation as to why are we having this conversation? Why are we in this conflict? Where he is, and maybe he's just a really smart man, but he'll be like, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. And like, I literally want to explode internally. because Oh, like, that's so interesting. He probably thinks he's giving you what you want. Yeah, and he does. And he, like, he is leaning heavily into that nine wing of yeah, that's true. not wanting conflict, where I don't mind conflict. I would rather talk it out fully, any kind of conflict we have, than just, like, kind of sweep it and just be right. Like, I don't want to necessarily be right. I want to get to the root of the problem. That's your five wing there too. Yes. And he just wants to like have peace and me to just mind my business and, you know, go draw on my iPad and not do this right now. And not that it's a bad thing. He just, he is so kind and gracious towards me where I am not always so kind and gracious. (laughs) That is so interesting to hear. I mean, you're right that he must be drawn from some pretty serious nine wing energy there to kind of want to just lay the thing down. Let's just, fine, you're right, I'm wrong. (laughs) That's just the end, tra-la-la. If I push him too far, he'll just walk off. He'll be like, you know, we'll talk (laughs) about this later. And I'm like, no, we can talk about it now. I am ready. (laughs) Oh, yeah, (laughs) that's so, you know, I'm a three. And so I don't love conflict. And I struggle to access emotion, which is weird because I'm at the center of the heart triad. You would think I'd be drowning in feelings, because I have feelings on either side of me and I'm in the middle, but weirdly it it pulls me out of it even more. And so I have to, some of my work that the Enneagram has taught me, which is similar, is that guess what? Conflict will not make you die. You will live. You're going to go ahead and live. It's not going to take you out. So know that. I'm married to a person who likes a good, high, solid engagement. He's like you. Yes. And that's what I mean. Like not so much a brawl fight type thing, but I want that engagement that conversation. And he sees it like you see it probably, which is like, this is just us working something out. Like this is a thing. We're going to examine it. We're going to really turn it all over. We're going to talk about it. I read it as aggression and like, oh no, we're doomed. Everything's doomed. So I have this catastrophic approach sometimes to conflict that as it turns out, isn't helpful. And so it is work for me also. You know that feeling when something is gnawing at you and then you talk it through with someone and sort of untangle it all? So good, right? So with BetterHelp Counseling, you can have someone there for you who can help you walk through those feelings whenever you need. BetterHelp has licensed professional counselors that you can start communicating with in less than 24 hours. And they specialize in helping you with whatever you need. Depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, anger, self-esteem, 
BetterHelp is so affordable and there's financial aid for those who qualify. I want a life of goodness for you. And to help you get there, BetterHelp is offering all my listeners 10% off your first month. So go to betterhelp.com slash for the love and join the 800,000 BetterHelp users who are committed to their mental health. So one more time, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, help, betterhelp.com slash for the love and get 10% off your first month today. Okay, back to our show. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Let's we're kind of right on the edge of it already. So so for the people listening, we love a six. We're married to a six. We're engaged to a six. We parent a six. Some we have some really important sixes in our life. When we find ourselves in conflict with that person as a six, what would you suggest are some of the best strategies to get to resolution, to solve conflict with that person and sort of move that relationship into a healthy place. How would you suggest that? Because sixes, as you mentioned, one of the greatest characteristics of a six is a fierce loyalty. So strong. I mean, the loyalty of a six is, it's ferocious. That can also look like if you sometimes get on the wrong side of that, if there's betrayal introduced into the relationship, it can be hard to win a six back over. Yes. And so I wonder if you can sort of walk through conflict with a six and here's your best tips. I'm learning as I go. I will say that loyalty is huge to me. I am loyal to my people. If I love you, I love you. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do for you. And I'm going to do my best to make sure you're taken care of. But trust is earned for me. So I don't just walk in trusting anyone. I am very weary of people. And it takes time to build that relationship of trust. And if that relationship or that trust is betrayed, It's very hard for me not to just cut all ties and walk away, which is not the way to be, I acknowledge. But that's my first instinct is to be like, I can't trust you. I need to leave because community is so important to me that I want to be in my community is where I get my security from. And so in order to have that security, I need that trust. So my biggest thing advice wise for conflict is mostly talking out. Because a lot of times, like, communication is key for every relationship, but communication and conflict to the six, explaining your side, you know, apologies that really are meaningful to me matter. And then finding ways to earn that trust back or to, like, reassure. They need that affirmation that you're still there for them. You still support them. You're still their community, especially if the six is the one in the wrong, you know, like, I still love you. I still want to fight for you. I still want to be with you. Like that affirmation. I think probably you see that more in like marriage relationship, you know, like just that affirmation of, you know, you are loved, you're seen, like, I want what is best for you. I want to walk alongside of you. And yes, this was not ideal, but I'm still going to be here for you through it. So that like assurance that nothing has necessarily changed. Like, yes, you might have things to work through, but that doesn't change the core value and the basis of the entire relationship. Whether that be friendship or marriage or parent relationship, you know, that type of thing is just that reassurance that you can work through it. Trust can be earned back and, you know, you can restore relationships. That's incredibly helpful because the truth is most people think that. They, that's exactly what they think. The, you know, the relationship is not in jeopardy. The wall is not crumbling. And so it's good for us to hear, those of us in tight relationships with a six, that you just need to hear that. Even though it wouldn't even occur to us that we're about to walk away from you, the fact that you think we might is worth- In my mind, I've prepared every 10 scenarios of how you're going to leave me. Totally. And I'm going to be stuck sitting there, which sounds so ridiculous saying it out loud, but in my head, it makes total sense. Sure. Sure. It's the way you're wired. And there's nothing wrong with that because it has a beautiful upside of loyalty. Like I'm not ever afraid to be in conflict with the six that I love and that I know who loves me because they're not going anywhere. (laughs) They're so loyal. Like we can weather almost anything together as long as a deep betrayal is not on the table. And it's just like an ordinary run of the mill conflict. I'm like, well, look, we'll get to the other side of this. And you know, we're stuck together because you're six. So fantastic trait to have. Let me ask you this. If somebody is listening and they are a six and they are interested right now in 
considering a path of growth. Like maybe this is one area in my inherent makeup that I could work on, that I could consider, that I could reach for, for a little bit more of a healthier and integrated self. What would you suggest to them? My biggest advice always, because I think we are harder on ourselves than anyone else might be. I think is stop seeing your anxiety and your need to be not to be like repetitive, but stop seeing that as such a burden and start seeing it as a gift and start embracing what you've been given with this like set of tools that you have. I mean, embrace the ability to plan things ahead and to be prepared for something because you can only help others through that and you can help yourself too. And when you stop seeing it as a burden and start seeing it as a blessing, I think that there's a lot that can come out of that as a six. Sixes are so great to be in relationship with. There's just such a competency to it, which inspires confidence in the people who love you because I a hundred percent see that preparedness as a blessing. And I am the recipient of some of that incredible energy from people that are close to me. And I find it a wonderful characteristic. I wish I had more of it. I wish I could draw on that a little bit more. And I can, you know, I go to a six in strength So I do have that capacity to be more centered, be able to look down the road a little bit longer and not so like manic. And it's a wonderful, wonderful number. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. These are questions that I'm asking everybody in the Enneagram series. So you just fire it off. Here's the first one. Not that you would want to. We love who we are. We are not wishing away ourselves. But if you could choose... To be another Enneagram number, even if just for a day, what number would you pick? See, I would want to be a nine. I feel like the world needs more peacekeepers. Yeah, that's true. And I would love to be able to sit back and enjoy the moment. Like I feel like a lot of nines can be very present in where they are. Amazing Um, gift. Like they can be where their feet are. And I do wish that I had that more often than not. I love those nines, man. I love a nine. They are just, you know, I, I think all of the numbers are great. I get, I get a lot of questions about what's the best number. And there is not a best number. They're all wonderful. Yes, they are. But I do admire the nine. I admire their ability to like, they get pegged as peacekeepers and peacemakers, which is true, but they're a lot more than that. But I do really admire that trait of them just because I think it's so important in our world today, especially to just have that peace. Totally. In this series, my Enneagram nine episode guest is Sarah Bessie, who's my really, really close friend. And I told her, I just released a book and I told myself the day before it came out, because as you know, a a three energy is just going to go through the roof. Absolutely through the roof on it. And I was like, I am going to be Sarah Bessie. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be present. I'm going to sit in the moment. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to let it be what it is. I'm going to be grateful for it. I didn't know how else to channel it, except I'm I'm not even going to try. I'm going to be Sarah Bessie tomorrow. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be her with her beautiful nine energy. It is I, so admirable. I love that. I know. Me too. I love a nine. I'm going to repeat that to myself on my wedding day. <laughs> yes. Just be Sarah Bessie. That should be your mantra. Okay. How about this? Here is kind of the opposite of that question. Which part of your Enneagram six personality do you love the most? The loyalty. I feel like it's such an important part because it's hard to find that loyalty in your day-to-day person. I feel like that loyalty is so important in everyday life and stuff that I really, really love that aspect of my type. Just knowing that we're reliable and therefore, you know, friends, we're there for you. (laughs) You are. You are. You're there for us. And you'll go down with our ships. Like you just will, like you will, you you will not leave the burning house. You'll stay in it with us. It's a crazy gift. It's amazing to see the resources our kids have that we never did, like online schooling. What could your kid do if they could learn online at their own pace in an accredited school they could access from anywhere? So listen, if you're looking for high quality education with a bit more flexibility, then you should check out Laurel Springs. Laurel Springs is an accredited online private school for K through 12, and they offer a huge diverse list of courses that'll push your kid in the best possible way. 
Plus, Laurel Springs is accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges and Advanced Ed, which means their transcripts are recognized by colleges and universities worldwide. Right now, you can register your child at laurelsprings.com slash for the love and receive a waived registration fee. Pretty cool. So it's laurelsprings.com slash for the love for your waived registration fee. That's L-A-U-R-E-L, by the way, Laurel Springs. Take the leap into online schooling at laurelsprings.com slash for the love. Okay, back to our show. Okay, this is the last question we ask every single guest in every single series. This It's a question I learned from Barbara Brown Taylor. And you can answer it literally however you want. So this can just, you take it big, you take it small, you take it serious, you take it silly. What's saving your life right now? (laughs) Diet Dr. Pepper and my dog. My dog, yeah. Your dog is what kind of dog? He is an Australian Labradoodle. And especially with being at home and, you know, the stay at home orders and stuff that we've been on. It's just been so much fun because I've had something to entertain me, like taking him and doing things with him and stuff. And I can't live my life without a diet Dr. Pepper. It's such a weird thing. That is my vice. That's not a weird vice. I stopped drinking Cokes a few years ago, probably to a decade ago. But if I'm having one, if I have one, which I have one a couple times a year, I reach for a diet Dr. Pepper. That's the one. And I like it from Sonic over that ice. Yes. Why oh my gosh. So I like the Chick-fil-A one. Our Chick-fil-A has like the good ice too. Oh yeah. 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 And you know what the good ice is. Like that's my favorite thing. You don't even have to explain it. You're just like the ice. Yeah. The good um, ice is crucial to the pleasure. I say all the time, I'm going to be a better person and not drink them all the time. But then I get stressed out and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fall back on what I know. (laughs) Let's be honest. If your worst vice is diet Dr. Pepper, you're doing okay. Let's just let that one breathe. Let's just let, just let it, just have it. Okay. Okay. Ashton, I loved talking Enneagram sex stuff with you today. Will you tell my community like where to find you, where they can find your incredible artwork, all, all the things. Yes, absolutely. So I am mostly on Instagram. So you can find me there at ashton.creates. I have a website that is just ashtonbry.com if you're interested. But if you want to see a lot of my art and just see what I'm doing day to day, I love connecting with people on Instagram. I love talking to you. I would love to have you over there and I would love to get to know you. Fantastic. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for your authenticity, for talking about who you are and and what's underneath it all. That is just a very generous offering to the community and helps us understand the sexes in our life so much better. So just absolutely delighted to meet you, cheering you on in every possible way. Thank you for putting your incredible work out into the world. It's really powerful for people to feel seen, as you know. And so your particular brand of work right now is such a gift for people to even look at a beautiful piece of art and go, oh, there I am. That's that's how I feel. Like somebody understands me. That means something right now. So this is me clapping for you. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks thank for coming Thank you so on. much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was so fun. And I'm just like over the moon. I told you I'm having a whole fit. So I really <laughs> appreciate it. Okay, Ashton. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now... To tell us more about the music you've been listening to in this episode, we hear from composer Ryan O'Neill, a.k.a. Sleeping at Last, about the inspiration behind this piece. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but in my research of the type six, I couldn't help but feel like they are the most misunderstood type in the Enneagram. So it took a real long time and a lot of conversations with type sixes to have any sort of clarity on who exactly these these courageous people are. So after recognizing the weight that fear plays in, into the type, I wanted this song to sound like relief. I wanted it to sound like a, like an exhale. So my goal here was to sort of write a song version of, of going to the spa. I wanted it to feel like there is zero tension in it. It is just, is just relief, just a way to offer type sixes a few minutes of a break from worry. 
So even the drums sound like a, a gentle shushing, and the piano and the woodwinds have a sort of a Disney idealism in them, sort of nodding to escapism uh, that I was hoping to offer here. And, and I wanted the melodies to to feel like safety, even in the structure of the song. I have a very traditional A B A B C structure. And honestly, I had I had a lot of difficulty writing the words to this song because I really didn't want it to be all about how scared type sixes might be or how fearful they are. So I got stuck for, for quite a while. And one of the moments that helped me recognize the gift of the type six and, and sort of the direction that I wanted to take in the song was when I was out on a walk and uh, I noticed some bunnies that were uh, just a few feet away from me and they were standing perfectly still keeping a very close watch on me. And then later that same day, I saw some deer in my backyard whose ears were kind of twitching and, and they were also keeping watch. And it occurred to me that these beautiful creatures are are so courageous. They're not hiding or, or cowering away somewhere. They're out there well aware of the, the risk involved and are living life out in broad daylight. There's something so beautiful about that, which is, uh, of course, not at all to compare sixes to those animals, but they they help me to see that there is an immense amount of courage in every type six that goes about their day well aware of all of the dangers. And that is such a gift that they give to everyone around them. They they truly are a sanctuary in that way. Musically, it felt right to be a waltz as a, as a nod to the, the loyalty of the type six. Uh, so a waltz is with a partner. And uh, I, I just love the idea of this song implying that togetherness. I certainly have a much deeper appreciation and admiration for uh, type sixes after writing this song. They are incredibly strong people and they're complex, which I think is why so many uh, of the writings about type sixes in in everything I, I have found can sometimes feel like it's contradictory or all over the map. So I, I wanted to write a really clear song about the the type six strength and uh, their, their courage. And I wanted it to feel like a token of gratitude. Again, the letting go of the type six uh, seems to be showing up in broad daylight with without any guarantees. So it was an utter joy to get to write this song. And I, I truly hope that for any type six that hears it, that you feel some sort of relief in these words. And there you have it. I mean, love. That makes me want to run to all my Enneagram sixes and gather them in my arms. <laughs> Oh, it's so helpful to learn about each other's numbers. It's not just who am I? How do I know more about me? It's also who are you? And how do I know more about you? And what do we look like in relationship together? I have learned so much from this series, you guys. Brandon and I have a debrief every single week where we talk about what the guests have said that week. And we talk about that episode, what it meant to each of us, how we want to add to it. The Enneagram is such a great tool for health, both personal and relational, and of course, spiritual. I am super grateful to my guests for bringing their full selves to the table. It can be really overwhelming to talk to this many listeners about the inner wiring of your heart, mind, and soul. So the fact that these guests are willing to do it with this much transparency and authenticity means the world to me, and I know it does to you too. Next week, get excited for those fun, incredible, lively, sparkly Enneagram 7s. Next week, we have the seven episode, and you are going to love it. I have said this over the course of this series several times, that if I had to pick another number to be just for a day, I think I'd pick a seven. That's what I actually was hoping I was when I took the test, but it turns out I am completely not. However, I do love me a seven. I have some sevens in my life that are so dear to me. I parent a seven. I can't wait for you to hear that episode. So come back next week and we will dive into those absolutely delightful sevens. All right, everybody. Thank you for loving this series with us. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for downloading it. Thank you for reviewing it. Thank you for subscribing. Go do that, by the way, if you haven't already done it. And you'll get us right on your phone every single week without even trying. So... On behalf of the incredible Enneagram 6, Amanda, and my producer, Laura, and her whole crew, which is a fantastic company, we are delighted to bring you this series and this podcast. All right, you guys, see you next week. <laughs>